Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, this is Alex. This is the Ramble. And if you're in the United States of America, anywhere in the world, we're in New York and we go until midnight. Hey, look there. There's Stephen Kravitz. Hello, Stephen. How are you? Hey, Alex. I'm fine. Hi, people. Hi. I hope you're all well. As you can tell, I'm still in New York. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you know, the, it's unbelievable. Out in front of my house is just street parking. Yeah. And they put a sign on both sides of the street. We're going to be cleaning the street between 5 a.m. No, 7 a.m. and 5 p.m., but they don't tell you which day. <laughs> so did you did you call somebody to try and find out? Uh, there's a website I have to t- check out. Oh, I see. It tells you what, what, what on your street, whether it's uh, uh, uptown or downtown or what day it is. Yeah. Right, 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 right. But is that ridiculous? I think here in New York they have like, I mean, I don't have a car, so I don't know this for sure, but they have like alternate side of the street parking. Right, right. But, it, but in some communities, like in San Francisco, I remember it was like a Tuesday and between a certain time and a certain time you couldn't park out on the street. You know. Right on Fell and Oak. On Fell and Oak, okay, you know that for a fact, okay. I mine was down in the marina, and uh, I think it was like Wednesdays, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, they just said you couldn't park on that side of the street. Right, uh, first, right. After the earthquake, you couldn't park on any side of the street. You know, so. because there was no side of the street. The side of the street was. If if the regular side of the street was here, the new side of right. the street was here. You know, it was like when we went right after the earthquake, we pulled up to my apartment house, and my girlfriend opened up the door and tried to get out, and she hit the curb. Really? Yeah. So she had to crawl and get out of my side. Yeah, yeah. Was your apartment damaged? Was the apartment damaged? I had a crack in the wall. Right. And the plaster. And I had a bookcase fall down. But that was the worst that I had. Okay. I kept the crack in the wall. They said, we'll fix that for you. I said, no, leave it there. Right. Because it's a memory. Okay. Of, of the earthquake. And it was a, right. it was kind of almost a pretty crack. You know. <laughs> so As far as cracks in the wall go. And it was only in the plaster. It wasn't like in the... In the uh, you know the foundation. foundation or whatever. Oh well, uh, I I got fired and I had to move to Florida. Do you remember that period of time at all? I remember getting fired. Yeah, and then I went to Florida. So while I was in Florida, I let somebody right after the earthquake stay at my apartment, and luckily I did because what happened was while I was gone. They retrofitted the whole apartment house. They went down to the foundations. They put in new pilings, and all right. of that was going on. If I was still living there, they would have moved me up to the fourth floor to an empty apartment or something, because the right. noise was so incredible. Uh, but I wasn't there for it. So when I came back, my apartment house was all retrofitted. Yeah. I got fired. I did three months of service in Florida, uh, and then I. <laughs> And then I I hated Florida. Oh my God, did I hate Florida? Which oh yeah, yeah. And I guess I got my attitude about Florida because uh, um, uh, I so hated it that uh, I could uh, I could never go back there again. Uh, You know. So as a Jew, I have no (laughs) place in my late years. I have no warm place to go to. I can't go to Florida because I will not live in Miami. Really? Oh, I get these flashbacks. I wake up. I've actually had dreams where I woke up from a nightmare in which I found myself back in Miami. Why was it so terrible? 
Oh, well, it just, it, the, the people down there were terrible. They were ugly. It was like I described it because of the times as a whole town coming down off cocaine at the same time. Oh, my God. You know, that kind of nasty, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Okay. And uh, just everything about it. I worked at a radio station where the guy who went on after me was mean and terrible and treated me horribly in spite of the fact that I saved his life. Right. He, uh, I'm trying to remember his name now, he was one of the most famous broadcasters in, in Florida. And uh, I came in and I guess he was jealous of me or something. I was too good. So he right. then started putting me down on his show a lot. But then one morning he comes in and he says to me, boy, I couldn't sleep last night. My arm was killing me, just killing me. I said, you know, if I were you, I'd go to the hospital. He said, why? I said, you might have had a heart attack. So he immediately went to the hospital, and sure enough, they tested him, and he had a heart attack. Really? Yeah. I saved his life. Okay? Yeah. So you would think, um, I think after that, he would go back on his show and say nice things about me. No. No. No way. No way. He just started up again. And he just hated me for some reason or another. Yeah, I didn't do, I was always very deferent to him because he was he was the big maca in town, okay? He was the big guy. Right. He was the big shot. Right. And and so I felt I should be nice to him, right? So I was always nice to him, but he was always going after me and saying nasty things and and because he wouldn't give me his blessing, okay? I couldn't make it on that station. There was no way. Right. Because you know, and of course I go to the boss and complain about it and he said, Don't worry about it, you're doing fine. Da, 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 da. And one day I just I had it. I completely had it. I I literally came unglued on the air over. No. It. Yeah. Yeah. Um there were these two other guys that went on after me that he liked or or after him that I that that he liked and he and they, they started going after him, not me. But my girlfriend, they started oh, putting really? putting down my girlfriend, okay? Uh, and, you know, it's kind of like with the mob, you know, like, don't, you can shoot me, you can kill me, but don't fuck with family. Right, 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 right and, right. and that's how I felt. I felt like Don Corleone, you don't fuck with family, you know. Who, <laughs> she was simply my girlfriend. She came to Florida with me. She wasn't fodder for that kind of thing. All right, because right. I never talked about her on the air or anything like that. Right? She was out of bounds. She was out of bounds. So I walked into their studio while they were on the air, and I started yelling and screaming at them and saying, "Come on out! I want to. I'm going to punch you in the face. You know, come on." And after I left Florida, these two guys kept talking about that incident for the next. My estimate is ten years. <laughs> Really? Yes. I mean, I spent three months in Florida, and somehow they remembered me for another 10 years. And I bet I could go to Florida, and they go, oh, you're the guy who... Right, right, yeah. right, 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 right. Yeah. I mean, and then one day, I'm driving from the station home, okay? I've just left the show. And I notice a police car in back of me. And I'm on those causeways, you know, they have those long, and they have turnoff points on the causeway. Right. And they go, move over, turn away, right? So I get out, I, they get out of the car. I get out of the car, they got a police dog, right? Growl, right. Growling at me. And I'm going, what's this all about? And they said, shut up. And they, you know, they were looking through my car, and they were kind of, and they, they, and and they uh, were just, they literally terrorized me. And then a friend of mine saw what was happening and pulled his car off, and said, uh, "What's the problem, officers?" And they said, "Get out of here right now, or we'll arrest you." So he oh, had, wow. so he, he had to leave. Now you can imagine the kind of terror I'm feeling. I've got these cops who look like they're going to arrest me or maybe kill me. Okay. And this dog who's snarling at me, okay, and uh, they said, "Yeah, we uh, we, uh, we 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 pulled you over. We hear you have bad things to say about the police department on your show." Is that right? 
I said, where in the world did you hear that? I said, I, I, I've never talked about the police department on my show. And he said, oh, a woman called us. They pulled me over because some anonymous woman called, this, who didn't like me, I guess, didn't like me on the air, called them and said, they've been, he's been putting down the police department. And they, that's why they pulled me over, is they thought that I had said nasty things and they were going to give me a ticket or they were going to take me to jail or any, any number of things. So at that point, I went home and said to my girlfriend, we got to get out of here. Time to go. Time to go. Um, oh, they, well, there goes my watch. I bet it's a, I bet it's a spam. Of course it is. See, who's calling me from Salina, Kansas? Uh, anyway, so uh, I, I said we got to get out of here. And uh, the next day, I went into the boss. I said I quit. So he said you're bet that's bet you're better off. And uh, I we got in the car and, and left. You know, I, pa I packed everything in the house because we just moved in three months earlier. But I packed everything in the house and got somebody to send it via UPS. Uh, and I packed everything overnight so we could get out the next day. Right. And, and uh, you know, as soon as I crossed that Florida border, I breathed a sigh of relief. You know, now I didn't know what I was going to do with the rest of my career, and luckily I came back to San Francisco, and they rehired me at the station that had just fired me because they weren't doing very well with their new hire. I bet. So I was back in business again. But, man, that was a, just a horrid three months. Is that when Johnny Steele took over your show? No, that was after I left the second time, uh, my second firing, as it were, you know. So who took over after your first firing? A guy from San Jose who was like a shock jock who was a big hit down there. And I'm trying to remember his name now. But he, they found it, that was a bad idea. That it was just a terrible idea. Because their ratings went into the dumper from what I, where I had them. Okay. I bet. I mean, mine had gone down quite a bit at one point, And that's why they decided, oh, we'll get rid of him and replace him with this guy. Um, uh, but you know, ratings go up, ratings go down. So, sure. so they rehired me and brought me back. And, uh, what happened was, uh, the day I came back, the ratings jumped back to really a high number and stayed oh, there for quite a while. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, then they decided to get rid of me again. They never learned their lesson. And, uh, uh, I was gone and they brought in Johnny Steele, uh, but I, I don't even want to get into the Johnny Steele thing because I hate that motherfucker. Really? Yeah. Well, what he used to do was he, before I even got fired, he would constantly kiss up to my general manager, go in and sit with him in his office and everything. And then he, at one point, uh, I get, a, I get brought into the boss's office and he says, what do you have against Johnny Steele? And I said, nothing. And he said, well, he was in here complaining that you were like, uh, you know, you're giving him a bad time and you're not putting him on enough and blah, 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 blah. And I'm going, no. So he was in there for months kissing up to the boss and bad-mouthing me because, oh, he because he wanted my job. Yeah. 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 Uh, and uh, so eventually he got it. And eventually he got it for about, I don't know, three, four months or something before the ratings were so terrible they got rid of him and because the station had been bought up by Infinity, uh, which oh, had really? which had Howard Stern, they simply right. they simply fired him, put Howard Stern on in the morning. Now my theory was that what Infinity did, because they had bought the station while I was still there, is they had uh, fired me to get me out of the way, replaced me with Johnny Steele, which they knew was only a temporary measure, and right. then they brought in Howard Stern. So Howard Stern would not look like the bad guy who replaced Alex Bennett. I got you. Yeah. I got you. So that's what happened. You know, I mean, I, I don't know for sure. And the guy who ran Infinity, Mel Carmison, I finally, when I came to New York, I... I was at Sirius XM. I got my little thing at Sirius XM, and shortly after that, they announced their new head of the company. 
Mel Carmazin. Really? And I went, oh my God, here we go, you know. And I came, he came in. And one day I'm in the coffee break room. Right. And uh, I, 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 I walked up to him and I said, I just want to introduce myself, Mel. Uh, I'm Alex Bennett. He says, oh, Alex, of course. He says, I'm your biggest fan. And from that time on, I love Mel Carmazan. <laughs> I bet. I yeah. bet. Yeah. He, he, actually, he liked talent. And, and uh, he treated ta talent like they were gold. His salespeople, he beat up. Yeah. Right. But, right. But talent he loved. And I got to really like him. I mean, I, I felt he was, a, he was a good presence at Sirius XM. And uh, he finally left. I can't remember under what conditions. The company, I think, financially had the stock was down to five cents or something like that. But he saved the company. He saved the company by going out and getting somebody to buy like forty percent of the stock, which saved the company. Oh, and really? Then, and then after that, after a little while, I can't remember why he left exactly, but I thought he was very—he was a very good, good broadcaster. Good broadcaster. Uh, and I had turned down a job with him years earlier in Washington, D.C., which, by the way, I'll, I'll mention this because I haven't told the story on the air yet. I, um, at one point, they wanted to hire me at WJFK in Washington, D.C., or it's right outside of Washington, D.C. And uh, I got, uh, you know, and I was negotiating back and forth with them. And uh, ultimately, I told them, no, I'm not going to go. The reason was is that they wanted me to quit my job in San Francisco before they hired me because they said Mel doesn't like to look like he's stealing somebody. Right. And doesn't want to make himself, uh, he, he, you make yourself kind of um, um, legally culpable in something like that, too. If it's found that you've stolen some talent who's making a lot of money for a station, that station right. can sue you. Okay, so I had to leave first before I could go to WJFK, and we had made the whole deal and the money and all of that. We just, I just, we just hadn't exchanged contracts, and I started thinking about it and going because I still don't know Mel well, right? I, I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, if I go, he could then say, well, bet, all bets are off, but you quit, right. okay, and I'm gone and I'm out of the way. And right. I made it safe for Howard, who they had on in San Jose. Oh, really? And so I didn't take the job, which is one of the biggest regrets of my life because I could have had syndication and everything, you know. Oh, really? And I found out in later years, as I say, that Mel was a great guy, you know, and that he was great to talent. Guess who took my job at WJFK in Washington, D.C.? I have no idea. Uh, Getty? Getty? Is that Liddy. Gordon Liddy. Oh, really? Yeah, who just died, by the way. Yeah. Bad ratings. <laughs> Bad ratings. He got the job. I, I don't really? know how you go from me. You know, you say, oh, I, we, need a, we need a guy to go on at 3 in the afternoon. Who do we get? Hmm. Alex Bennett, he's terrific. Let's hire him. Hey, here's the contracts. Well, as soon as you quit, blah, 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 all that. And when I say no, they go, well, who else can we get? Hmm, who's like Alex Bennett? G. Gordon Liddy? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, so uh, that's what happened. That's my, my touch with greatness and, and so on. But uh, and where the guy, that show where the guy you syndicated? I would have been syndicated, yeah, yeah. Because they, they took a lot of the talent that they had and they syndicated them you know and so i would i would have been yeah i could have been in 20 stations across the country or something like that you know wow and at that time that was a lot i mean howard had about 20 stations 30 stations something like that so uh and and uh, you know they, they they knew how to push this kind of thing and they were good at it and it would have been a good move for me and i i turned it down and I turned it down primarily because I, I had heard terrible things about Mel Carmazan. And so I didn't trust him. And I realized years later I should have. That, that was my big mistake. You know. But anyway. You never know, Alex. You never know. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, but uh, um, it was a pleasure working with the guy. And then he was out of there, and in a short amount of time, I, I was kind of out of there. You yeah. Know? And I think he was kind of always, a, 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 you know, protecting me, as it were. Right, uh, a supporter. He, yeah, he was a supporter. He, he, like he said, I'm a fan, Alex. You know. Right. And uh, that was, uh, yeah, it's cool. It's really cool. In case people see stuff coming up in the picture, it's because... I, it just, if I move something here, they will see it, see, if I do that. So what comes down is I get little messages on my machine and it comes down into the picture. So I had to, oh, really? I had to move the picture. I keep forgetting to do that. I never, I've never seen a message on the, on the screen. Really? Oh, this yep. is a Mac and it, it has, constantly has these notifications coming across. You know, you have mail, things like that. Right. And I don't mind it, but, and usually when I, well, I am not even going to explain it, but there's a way I do this at night where the picture is on the other side and nothing comes down in front of it. But right. then when I do this, because I want to look like I'm looking at you, I put the picture over on this side, on another side of the screen, and those things come down and they show up in the, uh, in the video. So okay. I, I don't know why I need to explain that. Most people don't care how we kill the cow. You know, they just want right. to eat the steak, right? Uh, I'm so, with them. Uh, we got a little bit of time here. I always go. I'm going starting to go 25 minutes with you. What what uh, what's happening with you there? Anything? You got all your shots, right? No, I got one to go. One to go. You got which one? The second Pfizer. Second Pfizer. Okay. A lot of people are getting Pfizer. I got Moderna. They're really? Bo they're both considered to be good. Okay. Right. 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 No, I have it on the uh, 25th. I mean, the 15th. Yeah. The 15th. Yeah. The, uh, At 3.30. What I like about getting the second shot is they say, congratulations, after they give you the shot. Yeah. You know, so, oh, really? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, you're now he a big hero. And then we got this thing in New York now on our iPhones that actually is a certification that we got the vaccine. So that you can show that maybe going into movie theaters or something like that, they might make that a... Uh, right, I condition. have a card that I carry. Well, the card everybody gets. What this does is this actually goes into the database at the state, make sure you're Bennett Schwarzman, right? Uh, and then it checks against that, and then it tells the app, yes, he's okay, Here, he, here here's the identification. With a big kind of a QR code uh, there. So it's good. It's cool. It's really cool, you know. Uh, and I, I see that as being a, a better way of handling this than the card because people could forge that card. All they got to do is have somebody gets a bunch of those cards and then they can tell people, okay, here, for $20, it's yours, and give you the card and then you can fill it out yourself, you know. Uh, yeah, but you got to get the stickers. There are no stickers on mine. The stickers on yours? I don't. I didn't get any stickers. I just got. Uh, yeah, a sticker. It says the uh, the date and time I got the shot. Yeah, no date and time I got the shot is written in by somebody. So, hmm. I'll have to look at it yeah, again. You probably look at it again. You probably didn't pay attention because they just handed you the card and said, "Here, keep this." And every. And, and you know how when you donate blood, they give you a sticker. Yeah. Yeah, they did gave you a sticker when you got a shot. Oh, really? I didn't get yeah. a sticker. I didn't get any of that fun stuff. Well, I'm son, sorry. Son of a bitch. Uh, yeah, but you got you both shots. Yeah. Well, anyway. By the way, speaking of Florida, they just, it turns out they, uh, they lied to the American public. There were 5,000 more COVID deaths there than they reported. Ta-da. Anyway, hey, listen, I got to go. All right. And you got to go, and uh, we'll uh, see you next week? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, the lovely and attractive Stephen Kravitz playing absolutely nowhere, but it, it, didn't you say you had a, got a commercial or something? No, I got a gig coming up on, no. uh, on YouTube, and when oh. I know more information, I will oh. pass that on to you. Oh, Pearl. Pearl has a commercial he's doing for a local lawyer. In, right, right, right. In Vegas. Anyway, hey, listen, talk to you in a week. All right. Bye-bye. 
in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Wow. Yes, there they go. There, there's our music. Okay, let me see here. Let me get myself a little volume here. Let me get myself uh, all set up so I'm, so I'm doing things right. And uh, hello to all of you. Uh, uh, thank you for joining us. Um, let me see here. Let me turn my lights down a little bit. I, I you know, th these lights get so bright, and uh, and I don't think they're really bright, uh, but as bright as they feel bright. Okay, uh, but they feel brighter than they really are because um, it's it's dark in here, and so when these lights are on, it goes boom. You know, and uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah, I had a I had a rash here that I that I that I was I almost wasn't going to come on the air this week because I didn't want to look like some kind of leper. Okay. Anyway, uh, there's a panel waiting, and I better go to them or they'll get really mad at me if I don't. Uh, so let me admit them all. And uh, uh, this is our initial panel showing up here. Uh, and there they are, ladies and gentlemen. There's Jeff Stein, and there is Brian Neary, and there's Alan, and there's Vernon Nunn. And uh, Charlie Wallace is out there, but he hasn't joined <laughs> us yet. So, you know. Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, yeah, much better, but turn it down now. now you're, you're, you're a little yeah, loud. Speaker. There we go. Yeah, you're a little loud, though. So turn it down. What? You're a little. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll change it. Don't, get, <laughs> don't hang up on me. No, I won't. Thank uh, you. Charlie Wallace, why aren't you joining us? Uh, you're, you're just it says joining, joining, joining. So, uh, oh, there he is. There he is. There we go. There he is. There's Charlie Wallace. There's our Dr. Doom. Uh, and uh, are you there, Charlie? Charlie? Looks frozen. Looks frozen. Yep. Again, uh, oh, there, he, oh, there he is now. Hello, can you hear us, Charlie? He can't hear us. Who, what, where? Oh, there now we go. Can you hear us? Yeah, now. Yeah, now you can hear us. Yep. You, you know, it sounds like for some reason you're getting a delay. Now, I'm going to say something. Like, uh, hello, and say hello back as fast as you can after I say hello. Hello? Hello. See, he's got a delay of some sort there, I think. Hello. Yeah. Called the brain? <laughs> no. Be nice. This is one of our... Yeah, uh, you, nice. don't, you don't fuck with Charlie. We like him too much, Alan. Yeah, hey, I, brain. Wasn't, I wasn't fucking with him. I'm just saying the delay, it takes time to think to say hello. No, it's just that there's a delay between here and Texas. For instance, as an example, when it's 3 o'clock here in New York, it's 1957 in Texas. <laughs> yeah. Well, he, he yeah. said hello within a second of when you said hello, Matt, here in California. So there you go. Oh, okay. All right. Well, yeah, who knows? Who knows? That's you Texas. Frozen. I can hear you, but you're not moving. I'm not moving? No, neither was Alan. Really? Uh, yeah, I, I, that's what the FBI call an obvious clue. I think you have a problem with your internet, Charlie. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I went and got a new modem today because I was having those problems before because I said something's mm -hmm. wrong with this modem. Yeah. And yeah. so apparently this one's not all that great either. Yeah, but yeah, I'm, I'm, so I'm, fro I'm, I'm frozen, you say? Yep. Wow. My and Brian's holding his hand up to his camera, and that's that's all I say is him frozen. Really? Hmm. Hmm. No, I don't get it. And I'm and I'm ultra red red tonight. I don't know why. Oh, it looks it. okay. Otherwise, you'll look uh, white. Well, I, I you know I, what I do is I have this temperature on these lights to orange. Because I figure it'll take the pallor out of me, but apparently it makes me look like I've got a fever or something. See if level I level Trump orange. You see if I change that, see how the yeah, orange we'll see goes if you away. You have a fever. We'll check you out. Yeah. Well, anyway, I don't care. My temperature. I don't care. I don't care. Yes, yes. Uh, oh, you're saying Doctor Doom, Robert? You want his report? Ah. Yeah. Well. 
Yeah, yep, we lost another 1,076 Americans today. Oh, really? Okay. All righty. And uh, how, uh, uh, what, did I, what did I see that uh, the Texas is, I think, number two to New York in deaths? No, we're behind... Yeah, we're behind uh, you and uh, and California. California, oh, California. is ten thousand deaths Ca ahead of it. California is number one. New York number two, and then yeah. Texas is number three. But yeah, you're so only we're nineteen hundred behind New York. Yeah, you're nineteen hundred behind New York. So come on, catch up soon so we can drop to number three. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a question, an early question, Alex. Now here's an early question from Alan. So when Como says. Uh, that there were a lot of unreported deaths in New York. It was <clears throat> overlooked or a mistake. But when Florida says it, it's a lie. Well, I mean, you said to Steve Kravitz, <laughs> they lied to us. Mm. Funny how you look at things differently. Well, I didn't say that New York didn't lie to us, but there's oh, some okay. question. Well, I, I forget. What there was some question before. as to the motivation and the way those numbers were counted. Okay, um, hospitals counted people who died in the hospitals as having died in the hospitals and not in a nursing home. Right. Okay, that's okay. where that difference comes from oh, in the underreporting. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you learn something new every day here. Hello, Vernon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there, there's Vernon. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He's with us tonight. Uh, I am uh, I'm uh, I, I'm I'm slowly considering just not never posting again anything on Facebook. I know I knew you were going to say that today. Why did you see that? A shit storm. I started. Yeah, a sh you I, can't do it. I started a shit storm over something that was just a joke, just a joke, and the joke I I I said was, um, um, I don't care uh, what the. Uh, 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 Cuomo has been accused of. He's good in my book. We, he just legalized marijuana. But you said allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly was the key word, and people just went right. Oh, the, yeah. They went. <laughs> oh, you, what are you? You're a rapist. You're 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 yeah. lefty communist. No <laughs> hmm? Yes, Vernon. You need one of those air horns like John Oliver uses on his show. Whenever there's something sarcastic, he pulls up this little ca can and he squirts it. It goes, ee! Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I just, it just, I, I, every time I ever write anything, that, yeah, there, there are people that come along and, and complain about it or try to be uh, more proper than thou, as it were, and, mm -hmm. and I'm sick of it. You know, I'm just absolutely sick of it. What do I need that for? It's my fucking page. Tell them to you fuck know? Off. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I may write a big thing about tonight that the trolls can fuck off. You know, <laughs> I don't care. You know. There you go. And uh, I'll give you a thumbs up for not that. Not like you have to monetize Facebook, right? What? Yeah. It's not like you have to monetize Facebook. Y right. Yeah. You know, like I'm gonna put a Monetized I'm gonna put a expected. I'm gonna put a post tonight that reads, uh, you know why men look down women's dresses? Because there's something to see. <laughs> That's logical. <laughs> Won't go over very well, but I don't okay. care. I mean what yeah. I, if I write I love puppies and kitties, somebody would write, Oh, you're for animals and vermin and the fleas they have on them He's and the you bestiality. Know. You're, oh, you're into bestiality. Exactly. Yeah, there you go. People, people have no sense of humor anymore. Somebody was wearing a PETA shirt the other day at the store. And I said, oh, that stands for people eating tasty animals. And they about <laughs> had a cow. <laughs> Nobody. It, what, ha what happened to America's sense of humor? Gone. You know, but the gone. conversation... It's on your in, in, on your post, the conversation left Cuomo pretty quickly, and it morphed into just simple Republican Democratic shit throwing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, by, like, in, where's in, Cuomo in, in all this? Anytime people start making a comment, okay. By the time you get to the bottom of the hundred comments, the subject is no longer what oh, they were replying to in the first place. Yeah, I forget what started it. Yeah. Yeah, just go up to the top where I said, you know, I yeah. Cuomo's right. okay, even though it, with me, even though he allegedly 
did something or whatever. I can't remember what I wrote. I took, just took it off. I got so sick of of all those people writing tomorrow, their names. Tomorrow shit. try the sky is blue just for an experiment. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and it's not blue right now. Yeah. Yeah. No, but it's, it's, and it's there not even the, I know. But it's not even the it's not blue. It's like, no, you're wrong. It's this. Wrong. You know, like wrong yeah. and, and and total yeah. 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 It was Good so what I used to do during that I was getting so mad at that. I would post something that I knew would just irritate everybody. They would start blasting, 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 then I delete the post. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Gotta play around a little bit. And then even more mad. And then I, I get really mad. Like somebody wrote and said, uh, oh, I don't know, Alex is the same Alex he was back in the days on WMCA in New York. Uh, uh, and, <laughs> and I'm thinking, you know, I mean, uh, I guess I'm not liberal enough for you. You're so liberal that you've got this, you want to censor me? You know, I, I don't, what, what's happened? This is why the, the left eats itself. You know, but uh, and of course I'm Dan Meyer. Right. Dan Meyer wrote, uh, you know, two more women, and we're going to uh, New Yorkers are going to get uh, health care, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, universal health care. <laughs> I thought that was a pretty <laughs> funny comment, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many how many people does he have to fuck before we get like <laughs> yeah, a, ta right. a tax rebate? You know, that's right. I know it with you guys are getting something with Newsom going to French laundry with all his friends in Napa. We got nothing out of it. Yeah, nothing <laughs> out of it. Not even a free dinner at the French laundry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. But that, that you know, the, the whole recall thing with him, I remember right when he got elected, they were already trying to recall mm -hmm. him at Safeway. They had, a, they had a booth there and they were already trying to get people to sign up. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, there are people now who are saying, oh, what a terrible job Trump, uh, Biden is doing. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. He's only been in office for six weeks. He hasn't done very much. Oh, well, he gave everybody $1,400. And oh, yeah, he, uh, he also put uh, how many shots of COVID vaccine in people's arms. But outside of that, he's done nothing in six weeks or seven weeks or however long he's been in office. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's ridiculous. You know, and he I'm just, reached, I'm just. He gonna, reached his goal of 100 million shots in 60 days instead yeah. of 100 days. Yeah, now yeah. he's going for 200. Yeah, 200. Now yeah. he's going for 200. Yeah, and he'll he'll probably do it. I didn't think he was going to be able to do the 100 million. I went, huh? Oh. But he he knew something we didn't, you know, and no. he got those shots in arms in 60 days. A and certain... with Texas frozen, remember Texas was having a hard time getting them out, right, Charlie? During yeah. that time, yeah. so they they couldn't get them out because of the freeze. So. So yeah. well, I don't I don't know if it made mainstream media, but I got something from the CDC today, and it said the vaccines are definitely working because around the country, uh, the people that are getting sick from COVID right now are under age fifty, the majority of them. Yeah, yep. So yep. the vaccines they believe are definitely working, and they say there's a there's a surge in cases with the people who are like. 15 to like 20 or something like that. Yeah. That's yeah. Enough. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, yeah. So go down, go on down to uh, Florida. Give, have your, uh, your spring break. Go ahead. <laughs> Just don't come back. There. Get yeah. late. Yeah. Don't and then come back. Get laid and get COVID, you know, yeah. Come, you know, have fun. Have fun. <clears throat> well, going back, going back a topic, a certain person who shows up on Tuesdays, I won't mention any names. Mm -hmm. Actually, he makes a big fucking deal about the governor of California sneaking off to a restaurant. In the meantime, no mention is made of Ted Cruz doing the Blair Witch Project <laughs> yeah. at the border. You know, no mention is made. Wait, he wait, wait, tries wait, to what, sell. What do you mean the Blair Witch Project at the border? Oh, did you see oh, no, the film I, he made at the border? No. It looked just like the Blair Witch Project. Yeah. It was incredible. Dark lighting and like it was really spooky looking shit. It was funny. And second of all, how stupid do you have to be to bring up the word Mexico if you're Ted Cruz? <laughs> you know, you would think that for about a year, Mexico wouldn't even get mentioned. Oh, but you if know, you asked him, if, if, Albuquerque if, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, something or other. If you asked him about that situation, he would say, I didn't go to Mexico. I went to Cancun. <laughs> 
He is. So a, meanwhile, he, how long? This very, yeah. this very same person, I won't mention any names. Buster. Also Buster. brought up Buster. that Matt Gates was being harassed. In the meantime, it came out today that this investigation started under Bill Barr. Yeah. <laughs> and Bill Barr personally had to give the okay because it's a public official. So Bill Barr knew about this investigation for a long time. Oh, yeah, I, I saw uh, Ted Cruz at the border, and I thought, why don't they turn on some lights? Yeah. And I had to laugh. I thought, they don't turn on any lights because somebody on the Mexican side will probably a sniper will shoot Ted Cruz. <laughs> if we're lucky. If we're lucky. Yeah. yeah. He should have got mugged. Charlie, you think he's going to get? Well, when's he up for election again? Oh, not until twenty twenty four. Oh no! Right. I yeah. hope I hope I live that long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I hope we all do. Yeah, well, I would did like to. See, did you guys see that uh, congressional con uh, group that went down there on the and got on yeah. those uh, those uh, uh, gunboats on the? Yeah. Rio Grande, you know, they had machine eighty caliber, fifty caliber machine guns on the front. Yeah, they, yeah, that's what, that's what you need to patrol the border. Sure, you know, to stop the drug lo drug lords. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And did you see? Did you see as the boat went by that the little uh, uh, inflatable rafts were coming over with Mexicans behind the boat. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a big deal to turn a boat around like that. What are you going to do? Shoot the people? No. <laughs> Yeah, well, they tried to turn their boat around in the Suez Canal. See what happened there. Uh, yeah, <laughs> really. That didn't work so well. I'm wondering if, like, some of those uh, uh, ten-year-olds or nine-year-olds or even five-year-olds that are coming across, if they give them a cavity check for drugs, you know, I mean, probably they did probably strip search them. Why not? To make sure. Yeah. There's, there's there's also never a mention on Tuesday nights of Jim's Jim Jordan spelled G Y M Jordan, mm -hmm. who when he was a wrestling coach at Ohio State mm -hmm. may have known about some improprieties that were going on and just kind of looked the other way. No why mention. is it? You know, we're worried it, about the French laundry. Why is why is it for the most part these guys they always catch are Republicans? Well, you know, yeah, I mean, well. uh, not that there aren't a few Democrats who are capable of diddling young girls. You know, I'd like to think we're holding up our end of the bargain. You know, but I mean, it just always seems it's Republicans. I mean, and so there it adds another level to the hypocrisy. But at least. Turn your, you know, like at least turn your back on these people. The Republican hierarchy supported Roy Moore in Alabama yeah. after it became apparent that he was trying to hump 13 year olds. For yeah. The love of God. Well, I want you to know that when you get down to that part of the country, 13 years is not bet wrong. I see. It's oh, not I wrong. See. It's I not see. wrong down there. I no. lost my head there. <laughs> Actually, it's 20 years ago. His argument, his argument back was she gave me permission. Yeah, there you go. Her mother gave permission. Her, yeah, her, mother, her mother did give permission, yeah. didn't yeah. she? Hmm. Let's see here. Can you have sex with a 13-year-old if her mother gives permission? No. No. As long as she's lost all of her baby teeth, I guess. <laughs> now those baby it's, teeth are really sharp aren't it's they? less painful yeah right exactly no, you know they're young when you're getting a blow job and you go oh hey here put this under your pillow tonight yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. my friend used to say if there's grass on the field what if there's grass on the yeah. field do you hear that term yeah no. well yeah. <laughs> grass grows rather young <laughs> oh, he's bad. No, he, he's a bad pervert in this. <laughs> that guy's of course, sick. these days, there's some grandmothers that don't have grass on the field. Speaking for yourself. <laughs> hey, hey, moon <laughs> over Manhattan. What saying? <laughs> yeah, notice the moon's out tonight. Moon <laughs> over Manhattan. <laughs> I should put a moon up there, shouldn't I? That would be you better. Right I should put there. a moon. Yeah, or show the moon, moon one yeah. or the other. Well, I was Don't trying. Agree. Remember, I had that on the on air light, and yeah. and Marjorie bought me that, and you know now it's being covered by the 
wonderful oh, yeah. cityscape I have back here. And I've been trying to figure out how to get that, kind of make put that in here so that it it's part of the thing, but it says on there. Is that, is that a live shot, Alex, or is that just a video that you put up on the green screen? That's a video. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, it's a little, always the it's same. A, it's it's a, a, same you don't have a camera on top of your building Look at, looking towards me? No, yeah. no, that's a, that's a, that's a loop yeah. of, of a time-lapse photography, time-lapse. Okay, if you may notice. Say, it's uh, like the Yule log. Yeah. I've been trying to find other versions of that, but this is the best thing I can find. Uh, yeah, you know, so Andrew Deutsch does all that stuff. I know he does it on yeah. the Monday show, but mm -hmm. he has a video that he talks. He has an interview with somebody and they talk about doing all that stuff. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. Well, this is pretty easy to do, you know. Yeah. But the, you want the on light, the on air light. Well, I could there? do it, but I and I've tried to do it, but I, I, I haven't gotten the right one. I haven't gotten the picture of the right one to put there. Uh, and then it would be sitting there in the middle of the city. Yeah. You know, now if I created a window frame here, okay, and then I had that sign mm -hmm. there, then it might work, you know. Mm. Oh, that'd be cool. Look like a giant billboard, huh? Yeah. I mean, I've thought about trying to make a, a, a to put the video in the middle of a background that's got a kind of like a window mm. frame. But then you decided a hobby might be a better idea. I decided maybe just sleeping in late would would uh, do the trick for me you know uh but uh, anyway so I, I so i'm sick of facebook i've had it with facebook uh facebook all you people out there on facebook you know what i could do i could write stuff and i can probably make it so that they can't leave a, a message can facebook I? jail no there's i think i think there's a a, a switch where you can say uh do not allow <laughs> you know oh Comments. replies comments, comments to this okay. yeah i've seen that before i don't know how to turn well, that what on. i should do is i should turn it on and then write something and it goes uh all you people who don't like what i have to say you can go fuck yourself and if you disagree with me please write something below <laughs> no comments <laughs> and there are no comments but see for me facebook serves a purpose I, I read posts and think why am i associating with this asshole you know, like it serves as a screener. Yeah. Well, you know, also when I write something like I wrote last night, I can automatically bet that I will lose at least one friend. <laughs> I will go there and all of a sudden it's four ninety nine. So I just go to people who've requested friend stuff and I'm immediately fill the pond up again. For me for me, Facebook is keeping up with your friends. There's nobody on my Facebook page. <laughs> That I don't know personally. Yeah, well, I don't want to know what other people are doing. I there's nobody on my Facebook page that I know personally. So, there you, you go. know, the it's, it's, it's the other way That's around. That's why you got 5,000 and I got 82. Well, you know, the thing is that I do have a, a, a GabNet live page that people can go to. And I would prefer yeah, maybe they go to that, you know, but they don't. So. My, my favorite are the people who feel compelled to show you what they're eating for lunch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like, who gives a rat's ass when you Oh, God, I hate <laughs> that when people take pictures of their food. You're like, oh, God, give me a break. Double up this weekend. I should, Just I, you, Robert. I, I should go to McDonald's, take a picture of a McDonald's hamburger, and say, I'm having lunch today at the <laughs> French Laundry. Yeah, you know? I put a Trump hat next to it. Yeah. That'll set him off. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, what, what did I see about Trump? They were saying he was in the news. Trump with is getting oh. arrested by, who was it, three guys? What What was that? Georgia. Georgia. He's being sued, for one thing. Yeah. yeah he, by, he, it, well, they they haven't sued him yet. Dominion is thinking of suing him. Cap, no, oh, Capitol Police, I think they've already la launched the suit. Oh, wow. really? A couple yeah. of Capitol Police, if memory serves me, a yeah, that suit. I heard this Oh, okay. Morning. A suit yeah, for, uh, I think um, you're right. Yeah. On behalf of the Capitol Police. But, yeah. But yeah. Jeffrey said he was being arrested. Oh, was, sorry. Well, was it? Oh, I mean, that would have been big. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm hoping that we all get to see that. So. What I saw well, is that, like uh, that, that. Uh, 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 who is it? Laura Trump, is it that I'm thinking of? Is that the right name? Who? That's Eric's wife. Eric's wife. Yeah. Right. Uh, she interviewed Donald Trump, 
And then she put the interview on Facebook, and they promptly took it down. Down, yeah. Mm. That was like today or yesterday, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, Facebook does have some good to them. Well, yeah. it's not like they were always good. They were forced to become good <laughs> by, you know, by pressure from everybody. <clears throat> you know, so, I mean, I just... Uh, but I just, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just, I just get so tired of it, you know. I just, I just want to do my little thing, you know. Come on, I'm a has been. Don't bother me. Let me just, <laughs> let me just have my last basking in what is not even the sun any longer, you know. And leave me the fuck alone. And I bet if I go to my Facebook page right now, somebody's writing something about this. Oh, Facebook <laughs> Live, they're writing things. Only boomers still use Facebook. Uh, on Facebook Live, oh, only yeah. Blue, oh, no, that's not <clears throat> Facebook. That's 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 YouTube. Yeah, that's that's the pretty YouTube much chat. true, though. It People is true. my son's age don't 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 bother with Facebook at all. Okay, so what do they use? Hmm. Twitter, Twitter, Instagram, Instagram. Insta oh. Instagram's owned by Facebook, then. Yeah, but it's a different platform with different audience. I you know, I can't still. I, I, I know. I, let's let's all go back over to MySpace. Yeah, right. Go look for it. Yeah. Good luck. Is MySpace still there? I don't know. I don't think so. I I think think Facebook let, took over. Let that. me look it up. MySpace. I never used MySpace. Neither did I. Dot com. Took okay. me a while to create a profile on Facebook. There is a MySpace. Yeah. There is a MySpace, folks. Ah. There mm -hmm. is a MySpace. Look here. Looky here. You guys can't see it, but the audience can. That's MySpace. See, it says MySpace right up, uh, right up there, and you oh, can see, yeah. it. And I see it on the YouTube thing. Yeah, it's got a picture yeah. of you with two fists in the air. Yeah, like right, this. right. But that's uh, that's YouTube, okay. Um, and but it's basically about music and things like that. And it, it mm -hmm. I don't even know what you do on there. It does, connect with people. I guess you can that, still that connect. That's an people. idea, huh? Not really. Yeah, I didn't see now that I just found out you MySpace can, does exist, okay? so You can write them a nasty note. Y yeah, yeah. I, wait, maybe that's a place that Trump can go, you yeah. know? Um, he's talking about starting up his own He's, he's always app. threatening stuff like that. I'm going to start my own news network. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Always threatening. I'm shutting down TikTok. I'm doing all this. Yeah. I mean, you so could if if you had a billion dollars, you could start a really good news operation. Yeah. But he doesn't yep. have a billion dollars. Yeah. And I don't think he ever did have a billion dollars. So so before Trump was president, he was flying around in his own personal jet. He can't fly it now. A Boeing 757. Yeah. Now he's in a little Learjet type thing. Because the Boeing 757 is parked at LaGuardia or somewhere, and the engine's all apart. And to make it airworthy again would cost like $300 million, and he won't do that. Because he doesn't have it. He'll like, stiff the mechanic. Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, but you know what the mechanic can do to the plane. <laughs> yeah. Got to be careful. Yeah. 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 Like, like yeah. yeah. Anyway. Maybe he can sell it to a Russian oligarch and they can there repair it. Yeah. Yeah. There sell it go. back to him for half the price. So there was more of the trial on the air today. Um uh, oh, yeah. and I I didn't I watched just a little bit of it, you know. Me too. Um, Fifteen minutes was enough for me. Well, you know, I just I I I just uh I, I you <clears> know, <throat> obviously I like the fact that they do broadcast these things and that the but all trials in the United States should be broadcast. They should be made for public consumption. So you can see these processes going on. But unfortunately, some jurisdictions don't allow it, and other jurisdictions mm -hmm. do allow it, and obviously Minneapolis allows it. And that's why you're seeing the whole trial. Um, but I, I've always said that the, you know, the process should be an open process because... Actually, if you think about it, courtrooms are open to the public. So the public can come in and watch a trial and that nobody is put on trial quietly and without any fanfare. Uh, so all trials should be broadcast. In fact, the city should have cameras in every 
courtroom that they have and should have their own channel or a couple of channels on a cable, on the cable, and you can just go and watch and see what's happening in this courtroom or that courtroom. There was something called Court TV that... Yeah, yeah, but they like didn't that. do it to that extent. Oh, I don't know. I you know, they, they picked and choose what they were going to do be based upon what would get them an audience. I mean, if somebody's in there like me uh, arguing about uh, a guy who screwed me on uh, this apartment or whatever, I'm sorry, that, that isn't going to be big stuff on court TV. <clears throat> so they wouldn't, they wouldn't choose that. But, you know, they did, they, I mean, they, they, uh, uh, Rob Alfano used to work for Court TV. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. The guy that lives next door to me is a high-level judge in New Jersey, and he was a commentator on Court TV for a mm -hmm. time. Yeah. I, the Court TV, I thought, was a good idea. I, I, but I, it, the thing is that it's never going to work necessarily as a commercial business. Number one, you got a trial. When do you break for commercials? You know, that's that's just problem number one. But also, you're going to only pick the most uh, uh, salacious of trials, a murder trial, a this right. trial. That, and, you know, you're not going to pick the trial where there, somebody is suing the, uh, the, the EPA is suing a certain city because of uh, pollution, right? Right. Plus, this, the public thinks of trials as another episode of Perry Mason. And right. the fact of the matter is... The trials, for the most part, are goddamn boring. boring. Well, I'll you know, tell there's you There's so yeah. much expository material that's just boring. Okay, my question is now, for a moment, this mm -hmm. trial in Minneapolis, and you've got the, you know, you've got the lawyers for the defense, you've got the prosecution, and so on. Do you think these guys are playing to the jury as much as they're playing to the audience? I mean, do are they are, aren't they aware that they're on TV? Uh, certainly, the people who are in the witness stand aren't aware they're on TV because they're coming to work. Uh, they're coming to the courtroom wearing <laughs> their uh, their uh, sporting gear. Do you notice that people do not dress up for court anymore? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, unless you're their the professional defense. reputations are on the line too. I mean. Mm. You know, it's they are in business after all. Mm -hmm. That female firefighter so, came in uniform. But do you think that the yeah. prosecutors? Well, uh, yes, I mean that's true. But the <gasps> prosecutors, though, or uh, all these people that are involved in the process in the courtroom, I think would have a slightly different demeanor if they didn't know they were on TV. I think that I think that female firefighter sure. is going to be. The, the nail in the coffin for this cop. Why is that? Well, because you've been because, watching this. I haven't. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I, she didn't have any video, but the video was going on. Other people were taking camera videos and stuff and showed the officer clearly had his knee on the guy's neck. And she comes around the corner and she says, I'm a Minneapolis firefighter EMT. Let me check him. He's not breathing. He's not, you know, they said, no, get back. You're not a firefighter. Get out of this. And so on and so forth. And, you know, when you arrest somebody, if you shoot somebody or stab somebody in this country anymore or, or, or choke them out or whatever the police do, you're supposed to call for medical assistance and check them out. And they wouldn't let her do that. And she sounds very credible. Oh, yeah. She was tough, too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Brian? Absolutely. And, and she, said, she said that they could try to revive them. And then yeah. he said no, and he he she said that he had a blank face, you know, uh, the yeah. cop just no expression when that was going through, and yeah, she was pretty detailed in what yeah. was going on. Hey, well, Alan, yeah. if, if you did you see any of the video today, the the body cam video? I'm curious to know. Mm -hmm. You I asking saw me? It. Yes, I am, Alan. Now, Al, I didn't know if you said Alex. Okay, you, what yeah, I'd like I to know. I what I'd like to know, just based on your experience, is did you find it appalling that that a weapon was drawn at that point? I mean, I'm not a cop, so I'm asking an honest opinion from you. Didn't did you find it as I did as a citizen somewhat overkill to have drawn a weapon at that point? I don't know if I would call it appalling, but I would definitely call it wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me yeah. ask you. It was right, right off the bat, right? To, yeah. me the, to, me the, to me, the knee on the neck is appalling. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll grant you that. Bad choice of words. Well, but we're talking it, about I mean, they said they, twenty dollar building. They, well, they here. said they felt threatened, yeah. and yeah. yet what I saw with him is he was handcuffed during the whole choking. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, if they had not done that, how much, how much could he do with his hands behind <laughs> his back? That didn't work so well with Rodney King and the cops there. They all got fired. Some are serving time in federal prison. You handcuff somebody. In this country, you're supposed to go hands off. Well, I mean, obviously they didn't. He had. His, I mean, I, I, this is the first time I saw it, and I yep. saw the handcuffs behind him, and he was on yep. the ground, and the guy had his, you know, knee yep. uh, his knee on his neck. Um, look, what went on is appalling. Uh, I just want to see this guy get the fairest possible trial, so there's no reversal later on. Okay. There's no reversible errors that they can take to another judge or to the Supreme Court or whatever. Uh, And that's why you want a fair trial, too. When I yell and scream about we want the fairest possible trial, I'm I'm Mm -hmm. saying that because you don't want to do stuff which is going to create reversible errors. You know, and and if this guy is found guilty, then he should stay guilty. Um, But I think that we haven't seen the defense yet. And we don't know what they're going to pull out, but they're going to. I think the two things they're going to bring up is that uh, they think Floyd was high at the time, okay. Yes. <laughs> uh, and the the person who checked him out in that uh, uh, that store said he thought he was high. He seemed to be high. Seemed to be in, uh, high on he, something. He looked fine to me in the video in that store. Yeah. Yeah. But but, but, the, but this guy was this guy was face to face with him and was dealing right. with him and he his right. opinion was he could have been high. That's Secondly, right. they're going to say he had mitigating subjective. had mitigating health circumstances. Okay, so that that could tone the whole thing down. And the next thing they're going to bring up, and I think this is the biggest one, is that he did only what he was trained to do. In other words, he was trained to respond to this kind of behavior in this particular fashion. And I think they're going to use that. I'm not saying it's going to play, but I'm saying that they're going to use that as an excuse why he... I don't know any place where cops are trained to put their knee on somebody's neck. You can break somebody's neck real easily. In this in this case, don't they... They, only have, they, they, they can have one person that doesn't find him guilty and it's 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 not guilty hung jury. right it's, it's a hung, hung jury hung jury yeah. okay but they can prosecute hmm? yeah they can they'll bring it back that up was my them. point last night that right. the, the defense attorneys really have one job and that's to sow doubt in the mind of one out of the 12 jurors yeah. enough so that that jurist stands his ground now, absolutely now by the way folks don't be mad at the defense you know, these guys are doing just as an important job as the prosecutors are doing. Yep. Everybody is entitled to a decent defense. And so if nobody is willing to defend somebody like this guy, then what's the jury, jury system? Uh, and he knows this poor guy, the uh, defense attorney, probably knows, you know, he's going to have a bad reputation in the community, and he's probably his life's been threatened already. I don't, I, I don't know, but I would assume he probably defends people like this all day long. So, you know, not these guys profile. get these guys get threats. Yeah, that's true. Probably not high profile. Well, who's got the roughest job here, the defense attorney or the prosecutor? Well, roughest that's job. interesting. If you're asking me who's got the toughest job, my answer is the defense attorney. If you're asking me who's got more pressure on them, I think it's the prosecution. Because it's a little like being the head coach of the best team in the league. You You know, like now you're expected to win. (laughs) And ain't nobody's going to take, you know, second place for an answer. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, uh, You know. Any it's, questions, Robert? You already asked. Oh, oh, oh. You did? Not I think I said. Oh, you already answered. Oh, that was, I, I, I'm thinking of a different question. Oh, no, what? I was thinking of your, your go around the room question. Yeah. That's up, that's up to the host of the show. I, I would, I'm sorry I, for I wouldn't, a minute. I wouldn't court that's show. called asked and answered. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Vernon seems like he's in a good mood tonight. 
you know. Well, despite despite the fact that Kentucky is trying to uh, handcuff our governor, we still are are dropping in, in not only cases but also deaths. Uh, we only had twenty two yesterday. Explain and, uh, how they're trying to handcuff your governor. Well, they have a supermajority in both the uh, House and the Senate in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. They have a supermajority of Republicans. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that they have passed, one of the first laws they passed, was to take away the governor's emergency powers. He can, he can issue an emergency proclamation in times of like COVID and, mm -hmm. and other disasters, but it's only good for 30 days unless he comes to the legislature and gets permission to extend it. That's the law they're trying to pass, or that's the way that's it is? That's what they did pass, and Sorry, he vetoed man. it, and they overrode his veto. So now it's being challenged in court. Oh, boy. Is your, is your governor Democrat or Republican? Democrat. Wow. He's the, he's the only Democrat in all state. Yeah. <laughs> Practically. No, well, that's not true. We, uh, Kentucky, Kentucky has, has basically three sections of the state that are more Democrats than Republicans. That's Lexington, Fayette County. Louisville, Jefferson County, and up near Cincinnati in the northern Kentucky area mm -hmm. around Covington. The, but the, all the rest of the state is Republican, 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 Republican. And which I'm way Trump. did you go in the national election? I guess it went Republican. Trump, Trump won by about 25 points. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Those counties tend to have a university in them, don't they, where a lot of liberal kids are at, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, well, this is, uh, you know, I mean, uh, and, and also give us a roll call of your senators. Who who are your senators again? Oh, God, you have to do that. <laughs> and you wonder Rand, why people are pissed. Rand Paul, the fake ophthalmologist, and Mitch McConnell, who's been in the Senate for 36 years. He's made it a career since he was a county judge. Oh, Isn't that amazing? Wow. That I mean, how does he get reelected, reelected, reelected? He knows how to bullshit. Really? Yeah. And and Rand as a matter Paul, of fact, when he first when he was first elected, the first campaign that he ran, mm -hmm. he ran against a Democrat named D. Huddleston. Mm -hmm. Well, D. Huddleston had been in there two or three times, but he got a bad reputation for never being in Congress when he was supposed to show up for votes. OK, so Mitch McConnell brilliantly. I mean, this politically, this was brilliant. Mm -hmm. He ran this ad on television with these guys with these bloodhounds, and they were all looking for D. Huddleston. Where is he? Where is he? <laughs> oh, wow. That's how he got elected the first time. Obviously not on his looks. Oh, no, yeah. no. He's always looked that bad. Oh, Jesus. Now, uh, Ron Paul, he, he's been elected. Ram, Ram, Rand Paul. Rand Paul. Uh, how many yeah, times? He, is... he, came in, he came in with the... Uh, with the Tea Party group in 2010, and he's been reelected, and he was reelected in 2016. So he's up for reelection in 2022. Yeah. How do you think he's going to do? He'll probably get win again. It, it's hard to say. It all depends on who the Democrats run against him. They've tried against Mitch twice with women, mm -hmm. and the last one was much stronger than the one that ran the, against Mitch the last time. Yeah. But she still lost by 30 points. Uh, <sighs> yeah. I wish I had that money I donated to her back. I just I just That's don't wasted. know. I just don't know how these people. I mean, you look at Rand Paul. How can anybody who's rational say we want that guy representing us? I mean, yeah. just the way he handled Fauci. Remember that the whole th thing with he and Fauci? I mean, yeah. come on. What are you trying to do? It, it, was he playing to his base? Is that what he was doing? Most likely. Or what he perceives to be his base? Well, yeah, he he is uh, he has he has embraced Trumpism as much as any other senator up there, mm -hmm. and I think it's because the 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 Republicans in the state of Kentucky they all love Trump. Why? Why? <laughs> because he's slung so much BS. For? He's slung so much BS. He is such a carnival barker, and they <laughs> buy that crap. Did I mean? Did you see Scarfy came out yesterday? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and yeah. said that yeah. a lot of people would be alive today if it weren't for Trump. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that he, he they could have saved 100 million lives. No, she said the first 100,000 deaths are probably unavoidable. But if we had right. learned from the experience. Yeah. You know, most of the deaths that occurred after that, we could have mitigated. Yeah. And 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 uh, 
I mean, uh, how does Trump, well, I would say, how does Trump sleep at night? Pro mm -hmm. Probably Fine. with a CPAP machine, but that's another point altogether, <laughs> you know. Anyway, Did you hear I, where he interrupted a wedding down at Mar-a-Lago? Oh, yeah, I was going to play yeah. that. I was going to play that. It was a, it was a, a wedding in Mar-a-Lago, and he wanted to get up, you know, like people do, to give a toast. And all he did was talk about how the election was robbed oh. from him and how yep. Biden's doing a terrible job. And, you know, the bride and groom are going, come on, hurry up. We want to go fuck. You know, I mean. Famo dog right. and pony show. <laughs> he's going to be at the pearly gates when he dies, and all he's going to tell them is the same thing. He got robbed. I was robbed. Yeah. Take, Why do you deserve take, to be here? I got robbed. <laughs> take today, for example, Joe's infrastructure bill. So that what they did on MSNBC mm -hmm. is they tracked how many times during his presidency Trump brought up a, a, a solid infrastructure bill. Uh, he had the Senate. He had the House. And... And let's see, what is it that he used to do for a living? Ah, that's right. Real estate development, and yeah. yet not a thing on infrastructure. Not a thing. And he loved to celebrate that. infrastructure week. That's about it. <laughs> yeah, he ran on that, too. He said, I know yeah. how to build buildings. I know how to get the infrastructure. Yeah. By the way, do you know what today is? I just, I, 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 if I just found this out, I didn't realize this. I didn't have it marked on my calendar. Two days before Good Friday? No, no, no. Today, according to stuff that was coming right. across, do you know what I'm talking about, Charlie? No, Today's the one-year anniversary. Oh. Today of the is lockdown. the official. I'm going to put it on my calendar for next year. Data saving day. Uh, data saving day. Yes. Saving. And all the companies that I do business with that have hard drives and things like that have been sending me stuff saying, today is data saving drive. Why don't you buy a new hard drive to save your data on? <laughs> oh, I'm not kidding. No. So this is officially National Data Saving Day. Give it time and Hallmark or create a card for they, it. They will. They will. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, see, so you, got, you got your questions, right? You, you have the questions. Sure. Come up with. I love the questions he comes up with because... They're important, and in this day and age when everybody needs to be on top of things, these are questions, I think, that are burning in all our hearts. Right? Probing. Probing questions. Probing questions. Like probe, you see your pants. We should, call, like we should call this Robert's, Ro Robert's, Robert's probing question of the day. It, yeah. my, my probing question for now is, have you ever used the fake ID? Oh, That's yes. That's a very good one. That's a very good one. Okay. How many here? Oh, really? Okay, mm -hmm. okay, okay. I never used a fake ID. Apparently, Jeff never used a fake ID. He just stole the car, that's all. That's right. Uh, that's right. You don't need an ID. <laughs> <laughs> Who else? Uh, uh, Vernon, you've never used a fake ID, right? And and uh, never Charlie used never used a fake ID. So uh, tell me, uh, uh, Alan, when did you use a fake ID? Oh, let's see. When I was uh, 16 and I wanted to get into bars. Okay, uh, how about uh, who else said they were? Uh, and how tall? Are, how tall are you, Alan? Six foot. Okay, yeah. So see, I'm six four. So when I used to live in these apartments when I was uh, underage, of course, I was like nineteen or twenty. I used to hang out with these guys that were older. So what I would do is hang out with them, and we'd go to the bar, and I'd go with my friend who gets the first round, and I'd meet the bartender. The second round, I'd go get. But to get in there, I had my fake ID. But then that bartender would know me because I'd tip him good and that he would never sure. pardon me. Yeah. But yeah, I, yeah. I used my, I had my ID and yeah, it was, it was not that good. But yeah, I got in all the time except for one time I got refused and I had to take my friend's car home. Did you oh ever use God. a fake ID, Robert? Yes, I did. Well, you I, must I have. That's why you probably asked the question. Yeah, well, yeah. Although I said no to something. Oh, falling asleep in the theater, I never did. So I, I've been fair. Oh, do you, uh, I should mention when you I, I should have mentioned last night and I didn't that however if Marjorie were here she would have to say yes almost every time I go to a movie theater yeah. <laughs> because every time we go to a movie theater what was terrible about 3D is I could never tell when she was asleep because she was wearing the glasses <laughs> oh, that's good mm -hmm. that's funny <laughs> I, I had a job in college summers at a, an athletic camp in Vermont yeah and I was, in fact, 
It was a Jewish boys camp, and I was the only goy in the place. I learned how to say grace, I, I, the whole deal. Yeah. Well, in any case, well, I was Jew, Jews 20. Don't, don't, Jews don't do grace. Well, mm -hmm. they did whatever we call grace. They, uh, they used to say a it's prayer called it's meal. called complaining. But go ahead. Oh, okay, oh, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. At any rate, um, I was twenty that my first year there, and the drinking age in Vermont was twenty-one. So not a problem. We're all going to go to the bar after a night's work, and I borrowed an ID from my bunkmate, and it. The cop walked in, a state trooper, and said, IDs all around. Ooh. And so I put out this ID for a, a guy named Charlie Lillis, who was six foot ten, had red hair and blue eyes. <laughs> yeah. And the cop looks at me and he says, do you want to reconsider this move of yours? And I said, yes, sir, I do. <laughs> and he let me off. Oh, yeah. My. True story. Great, great wow. story. Great story. That, no. That's some good policing right there, though. <clears throat> yeah, it is. Like, yeah. kid, you got to go home now. Go. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that, that's go. a question. If you, you ask it, that's not. You're not going to get as many people saying yes to that. Because I, I'll, I'll, I'll come up with this one. Have you ever in your life, um, have you ever gotten on the wrong train or bus? Mm. Oh yeah. Do you have, Charlie? When, when was that? Yeah. Well, I mean, I assume the elevated trains in Chicago count. Okay. Sure. Yeah, sure. End up going to northwest side instead of south side. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I have gotten on a train that was an express instead of stopped at every stop. And I needed one that stopped at every stop because I was going to one of those stops that stopped mm -hmm. on every stop. But here in New York, you can also accidentally get on an express train, and it's like it misses like awesome. you know three stops in a row and you're going oh my god and then sometimes sometimes you don't hit the wrong one sometimes they've just decided that day they're not going to stop somewhere <laughs> you know <laughs> and i wind up at 125th street okay yeah. yeah and then i have to decide whether i'm going to walk from 125th back to my place at 116th or just go over the this other side and take the train going uptown and then sometimes it goes all the way to 57th and i never can get off at 116th so anybody else ever get yeah on same thing as you an express instead of a local yeah mm -hmm. yeah mostly when i've traveled hmm? traveled like sweden i went on the wrong train a couple times yeah, yeah well oh. because you didn't know the deer but they from the harbor team exactly yeah uh <laughs> yes uh uh, uh jeff Oh, let's see. I was uh, working in the city, in Manhattan, and I was taking a course late at night. So I got on a train, and I, I fell asleep, and I didn't get back. And the guy had a real difficult requirements. One was, if you're not here on time, your date, you're, you're out. And then the second part was, if you ever didn't show up, you're out of the course. You failed the course, oh, really? you get an F. Wow. So wow. I got an F. Yeah, hmm. nasty thing. Actually, if Marjorie here, she could answer by saying she didn't get on the wrong train, but or bus, but she fell asleep on the bus and <laughs> then went too far. You know? That's like two answers, yeah. right? Falling asleep. I've done and, that too. Well, she didn't get on the wrong. She didn't get on the wrong bus. <coughs> she got on the right bus. Right. She just didn't get off at the right stop. Hmm. Yeah. Does it does it count if you're driving somewhere and you pass? The city, not just the exit, but the oh, city. I, I've, I've done that <laughs> several times. Oh, yeah. I'm driving to San Francisco, and I end up in San Rafael or on the bridge before oh. I go, well, wait a minute. I didn't want to be here. Yeah. <sighs> wait a minute. You went across that bridge? It goes uh, to Marin County? Yeah. It's called the Golden Gate. Yeah, I mean. That, oh, no, the Golden really... Gate. No, they, no, there's the Richmond San Rafael, which is oh, also. Oh, no, this, this mm. one, this it's, one it's, I, I was it, it's... in the north end of San Francisco. Do you know oh, that? Do you know the Richmond San Rafael Bridge is only the Richmond San Rafael Bridge going in one direction. In the other direction, it's called the Something McCarthy Bridge. Mm. Didn't know that, did you? Huh? 
Oh. Huh? And where do you wind oh. up when you go across? You wind up in San Quentin. Mm. Yeah. Not in the other direction, though. No, the other. Well, you still have to pass San Quentin to go the other direction. Yeah, okay. But anyway, uh, yeah. Well, so yeah, I just. I mean, I was going to a party in the Presidio, which is the the path to go to the Golden Gate Bridge. Right. And I was listening to the radio, and uh, you know. Mm. Happy nobody stepped out in front of me or something. The next thing I know, I'm on the Golden Gate Bridge. And I'm like, oh, shit. And, and, you, have, and you, can, you have to go across the Golden Gate Bridge. You can't. Yeah, you can't turn around. You can't it. just you turn. turn. You know, there was a time when you I was turn. a kid. When I was a kid, there was a time when you could do it. You could do a U-turn in the middle of the Golden Gate Bridge. Wow. One wow, night, yeah, I'm really? telling you this now. One night, I'm, I and some friends were in a car. And they're a little, not drunk, but they're, they're a little, little drunk. Okay, and we're going across the Golden Gate Bridge, and as we're going across the Golden Gate Bridge, in the middle of the bridge is a deer. Oh, so this guy who's driving chases the deer. The deer then uh, turns around and goes in the other direction. So he does a U-turn in the middle of the bridge. Holy okay, smoke. and chases the deer, and the deer gets so panicked he jumps off the bridge. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. wow. Well, he might have been depressed. That might have been the whole thing. But he I had too that much was, approach. That was at for, uh, when they always <clears throat> talked about how many suicides have there been on the Golden Gate Bridge. I said, well, so many and one deer. One deer. <laughs> one deer. Oh, we lost yeah. No, Charlie, sir. Yeah. But uh, uh, it, 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 it used to be able to do a U-turn on the Golden Gate Bridge. Also, what did they charge you? They charged you both ways. Now they only charge you one way. Right. But they used to charge right. you both ways. Double 25 price, cents going, 25 cents coming back. Yeah. So if you have a if you have a car that gets good mileage, mm -hmm. sometimes it's cheaper to go a free across the Richmond San Rafael Bridge into Richmond down that freeway and and over the Bay Bridge versus the Golden Gate which is a lot more expensive. So yeah, there's no way though that you can't you can make the complete circle without paying for at least one bridge. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so th this doesn't mean anything to anybody except people who are listening to us in the San Francisco Bay Area. And again, like the people on Facebook, fuck all of you. Okay, all right. <laughs> am I being am I being a little mean about that? I don't know. Charlie mentioned the L in Chicago, and so yeah. I think people on the West Coast would have trouble. With that. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, I, I used to take the L, by the way, when I lived in I Chicago. have two. Yeah. My family's from It's a great little train. It's a great little train. Hey, there it comes our there's our theme song. People have told me to go to L. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, That's the next question for tomorrow. People tell you to go to hell. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um have you ever fucked yourself? Uh <laughs> Uh, because all those people on Facebook, you can go fuck yourselves. Anyway, Jeff, thank you. We appreciate it. You're very it. welcome. Uh, uh, Brian, the sound is perfect tonight. Thank you. Yes, but thank you. Uh, Alan, thank you for joining us. Uh, Vernon, you call anytime. We love having you here. Mm -hmm. You're a perfect guest. So is Charlie Wallace and, of course, Robert Natale. How can, we, how can we not thank him enough? Everybody, mm -hmm. I'm going to sneeze any moment here, so I better get off. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye. I'll give you a big wave goodbye as well, and then I will let you fade off into the distance. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, and there'll be another one forming uh, next on the Jack Bishop program, The Intersection. He's going to be using Skype, and so you're going to have to use the... Uh, uh, the uh, call sign GabNet Live in order to call him. Uh, I will be back here again, let's see, I guess tomorrow night, right? Yeah. Uh, it's the law. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, be safe out there. Wear a mask, especially now we're so close to the end. I mean, of the pandemic. Do something about it, okay? Bye.